The observer pattern is one of the most prevalent patterns in current software development. It's a key player in making cleaner code that aligns with the solid principles, promotes single responsibility and makes your code more decoupled, thus enhancing its maintainability. In this video, I will explain to you what the observer pattern is, why it's useful and how can you use it in Godot via signals. After that, I will guide you through when to opt for signals and when other communication methods might be a better fit. The book Game Programming Patterns provides an excellent overview of this pattern and other design patterns applied to game development. It's packed with code examples, clear explanations and useful insights. You can access it online or if you prefer a physical copy like I do, check the video description for a purchase link. So, if you're interested in knowing the details of the pattern as well as its practical implementation in the form of signals, stay with me until the end of the video and let's discover the observer pattern in the Godot game engine. The observer pattern is all about improving how different parts of your code talk to each other. Imagine a game where you need an event to happen when a player goes through a door. One way is to make the door's script constantly check if the player is passing through, but this is inefficient and hard to maintain. A better way would be to tell the door's script to alert you when the player goes through. This stops the need for constant checking and only triggers the event when needed. It's cleaner and saves resources. In this pattern, there are two key roles, the subject and the observer. The subject notifies observers when something happens. In our game example, a general script managing the scene is the observer, waiting for the door, the subject, to tell it when the player passes through. The door could notify multiple components, not just one. This pattern is great for scalability. One subject can update many observers, making it easy to expand your game. It also means less tight coupling between components. The subject and observers operate independently, allowing for more flexible and maintainable code. Now that we have a general knowledge about the observer pattern, let's see how we can take advantage of it by using signals in Godot. In this simple example, I have this platformer game with a character who can jump. If the character falls, it continues to fall without any consequence so I want to implement a mechanism to detect the fall and be able to restart the game. For this purpose, an Area 2D node is an ideal choice. This node can detect collisions on a 2D plane, serving primarily as a detection tool. I will attach a collision shape 2D to this node to define the collision area, positioning it where the character falls should be detected. To detect the collision correctly, I have to set the collision mask to detect the player. Now, if I select the Area 2D node added to the scene and go to the Node tab, we can see the entire list of signals that this node can emit. In this case, we are interested in the Body Entered event. We can double-click and choose the master script that manages this scene. Godot automatically creates a method that will be called when this event is triggered. If you look at the right side of the screen, you will see that we have this signal connected. Now I just have to write the code to restart the scene. This can be done by obtaining the tree and calling the reload current scene method. Now when the player falls, the area 2D body entered event is fired, informing the master script of the event and giving it the opportunity to act accordingly. We have just used the observer pattern to perform this functionality. In this example, the master script that manages the scene is the observer, while the area 2D node is the subject since it contains a reference to the master script to notify it when the event occurs. What we have just seen can be useful for the events already pre-configured in the different Godot nodes. However, there are times when we ourselves want to create our own events. Let's now imagine that we want to count the number of times our character has jumped. I have added a label at the top left to show the number of times this has occurred. For now, this label does nothing, but we are going to use a custom signal to display the current jump count. To do this, we will first go to the player script and add a variable that counts the number of jumps made. 
Now using the signal keyword we can define our custom signal. Not only do I want this signal to be emitted, but also to report the number of jumps the character has made. So I add a count parameter of type integer that represents this number. Now all I have to do is find the place where the jump is managed. Add a jump to the jump count and emit the signal we just created using the emit signal method. This method takes the name of the signal to emit along with any parameters it may have, in this case the number of jumps. Now we go to the master script of the scene, which if you notice already contains reference to the label. We choose the player and we can see the entire list of signals that it can emit. As you see at the top, the custom signal that we have created appears. We double click and select the master script so that Godot creates a method that will be called when the signal is triggered. Within this method, I only have to update the label text with the number of jumps. Now, the number of jumps made appears in the label. You should also know that this is not the only way to connect signals. So far we have connected the signal with their observers to the node panel, but they can also be connected through code. We are going to try it. First, I'm going to disconnect this signal by right clicking and choosing disconnect. Now I'm going to need a reference to the player since it is the subject that emits the events that interest me. In the ready method, which is executed when the initialization of the script is complete, I can call the player's connect method, defining the name of the signal I'm interested in, as well as the reference to the method I want to call when this event is triggered. Note that, in this case, the node panel does not show that there is any signal connected. However, when we run the game we see that this functionality continues to work. As you have seen, this way we can define and use our own signals for our games. However, a novice may ask here, and very correctly, if it is correct to use this method in all cases. Let's delve into when it's necessary to use signals and when it's not. The idea of call down signal app is simple. The scenes master script higher up calls methods on the lower nodes. Conversely, the player at a lower level uses a signal to communicate up the hierarchy with the master script. This practice helps us decide when to use signals. Why do we do this? To avoid tightly coupling components. If the player script directly referred to the general script, it will depend heavily on it, leading to issues if that script isn't present or changes. Using a signal, the player remains independent, emitting signals without needing to know who receives them. Now, you might think that calling down creates a strong coupling with lower nodes. It does, but that's intentional. The master script is designed to always work with these specific child nodes, so directly referencing them isn't a problem. This ensures the master script and its children can work together seamlessly. Using signals can help you make your code cleaner and more scalable. Another pattern that can help you a lot in your projects is the command pattern. This pattern will help you decouple the input events from your characters. For example, it can help you making an AI take control of your character without affecting the script that controls it. If you want to learn more about the command pattern, you can do so by clicking on the suggested video that you see on the screen. Press the like button if you liked this video and subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Goodbye.